So are you going to uh, grandfather these gas companies so that if they have existing equipment that's in before you come up with new technology, do they get to keep the old stuff, or are they going to have to be brought up with uh, the new uh, the new best practices? And, and, these are, and I want to speak to this by saying these are still currently proposed to, for the new PBRs and new standard permits related to oil and gas. They do have a existing facility clause that allows existing facilities to operate as they currently are until they make a change. Or unless they have another facility that's owned and operated and controlled by that same company, uh, within a certain distance of that, that at that point that facility would then have to, to, to come up to the, new, exist, to the new standards. But yes, there is a clause that allows existing facilities to continue to operate. And I'm, I'm not sure if this, it might be, do I, are they close as bad? Oh. All right. Let me get it here. The, the next thing I want to talk about is I'm glad and I thank you guys for bringing up uh, this very important thing about reporting. Because I'll tell you what, I'm betting money that this is severely underreported. I pass by Scenic Road in Flower Mound, you know, at least three times a week. There is an overpowering smell from one of the compression sites in our area. And I know that there are emissions coming out of there because I was with a gentleman with a flare camera who showed me that. So we have problems every day there. Have I ever called TSEC? I'm ashamed. I, I have never done that. I did ask somebody else to call, and they did. And they're going to talk about that. Um, but I think underreporting is a big problem. We're just, we sit there and say, oh, geez, well, that's what happens when you get gas wells in. So I think that that's a concern that everybody needs to uh, be aware of. The next thing that I want to talk about, I want to transition into the EPA. There are studies being done across the, the country. Um, I like to look at the ground zero states, Colorado and Wyoming. They had a lot of practice with this. I think Mr. Cheney started in Wyoming, you know, after he got his Halliburton loophole in, he decided to go home and practice. And so there, there are a lot of studies that are showing very distinct health effects in those areas. You gonna let me go? Is that my five minutes up or what? <laughs> You gonna give me a little more? Give me more time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So there have been very good scientific studies done, especially in Colorado, Garfield County, Colorado. They have done what I would call scientific studies. They put up monitoring equipment, and then they actually study what is going down downwind of each of these facilities, and they tie it to the health effects in that area. And then they use various modeling techniques to predict what is the likelihood of, say, cancer in two years, in 70 years. And there is absolutely plenty of information, and I'll be happy to give you this one study. It's the latest from Garfield County. It came out in September. So there are studies going on across the country. We know people in, in Pennsylvania are, are dying from bad water and other things, not dying literally, but they're, they're having a lot of problems there. What is the federal government doing to force states to protect citizens? Our due process here in Texas doesn't exist. You can see that. I mean, he's trying, but his hands are tied. You know, other people don't even try at all, Texas Railroad Commission. You know, they have enough inspectors maybe to, to check a well once every five years. We do self-compliance here in Texas. I went to the EPA's meeting in Fort Worth back in June, and people, this, there was a lot more people, I'd say a thousand people. Story after story, people got up and said, we need somebody to protect us. We need the EPA to come in and make the states follow the rules. And you're, you guys are doing a study, and then you're going to give us results in 2012. You know how many kids are going to get leukemia by then? How many women are going to get breast cancer? I don't know. They know in Garfield County, though. I think that's enough for my time. I could go on forever, but I know a lot of other people. <laughs> <laughs> you brought up the, the meeting in, in Fort Worth, and that was specifically about water, water issues. And uh, there were about 650 people. Okay. You know, there, it was, it was a good like turnout. A uh, I think, you know, by the hour, there were more people there than anywhere else, including the, the big meeting in New York when, you know, they were thinking they were going to have thousands, and it turned out to be about 1,200 people in two days over, you know, four sessions. And so the people in, in Fort Worth really turned out. You know, I think Dave and some of the, the folks really got the word out, and so we could get the information. That, that was what was important. And that was a study design, um, and, and part of this is driven by, you know, a, it's a research and development, you know, study. And so you have to 
peer review the state design, you take the, the data in, and then, you know, come 2012, you know, probably December 31st, 2012, you know, we could use all the time, we have to peer review the analytical results on the back side. And so um, it, it, it is a time-consuming process, but you want it to be substantiated uh, and, and not just, uh, you know, collection of newspaper articles, because uh, that was kind of what, you know, people have alleged in the past has been done. And then you just get into a fight back and forth about, you know, who said what when. But with a, a study that's been designed correctly, you end up with something that, you know, can't be refuted. You know, and I think that's the time and effort that, that's going into it. And that's, it is a time consuming process. Um, the other thing I would mention that there was another meeting um, early August, uh, in Arlington, um, and we took comments uh, from folks here in the, the area. Uh, there was another meeting the next day in Denver, and that was on air quality regulations, how the regs should be changed to reflect more urban drilling. You know, most of the regulations were designed, you know, when people were operating in the Permian Basin, and you could, you know, find more cows and people in some county, you know, and you didn't have the impacts associated. And so you had a natural, you know, uh, distance that protected individuals, you know, unless your farm homestead was right there on the property. Um, we now know a lot more. We need to be able to make the changes in the regulations, uh, and that's part of the process that's underway on the federal level on the, on the air side. Uh, there, there's a lot of the process in gas drilling and gas processing and then transmission. Um, most of you know, the regs are on the transmission side. You know, the, the big compressor stations, there are more regulations that affect them from the federal government. You know, there's less, you know, on the processing and even less at the wellhead. And uh, part of that was, you know, the states would do a good job, they would have the power to do it. Um, there were more of those sites, and so it was kind of a division of work that was probably set up back in the 70s. And I think today people have a greater concern because of the, the urban nature of what's going on, and you know, there are a lot more people very close to these facilities. And they're getting 